So is your motorcycle cranking over slow? If you're searching for a video on how to quickly and easily test your motorcycle battery, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome back Bikeaholics, Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com, thanks for checking back in. So in this video I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to test your motorcycle battery. Maybe it's cranking slow, you're not sure if it's taking a charge and things like that. These are some really easy tests using a multimeter. This one is about $25 on Amazon, works really great. Link in the description below, it's an affiliate link. No additional cost to you, we do get a small kickback if you click through and make a purchase. This is the second style, it may look more like this, I'll use both of them because you may have one or the other. Let's get to it. All right, and so I'm standing here next to my 2014 Street Glide Special. As I stated, it's been cranking slow. I've uh, been dealing with it for some time, definitely probably something going on with the battery. Um, and I wanna let you know how that sounds, especially when it's cold, the oil's thick, things like that. It's having uh, troubles cranking, even when it's warm. Let me show you how it sounds. So you could hear there where it cranked, especially under load, and it was that real low, like it was having troubles kicking over the motor. That's indicative. Um, of something going wrong, either a charging system or a battery. I'm thinking it's a battery. Let's throw a multimeter on this. I'll show you how I test it and we'll find out what's really going on. All right, so before we actually test the battery on the street light special, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the headlight and the stereo. I'm gonna let everything run for about two minutes. We wanna dump any type of false surface charge on the battery so we get an accurate reading. All right, so this is the first type of voltmeter I'll show you. This is the Amazon one for about $25. It's a pretty good meter. Comes with your leads, of course. Red with the red circle, positive is gonna go right over there, just like so, and then you've got your black negative right over here. All right, and then you've got your test leads. We actually, regardless of what kind of meter you're using, we wanna use volts. Of course, this is a 12 volt system, it's labeled. This is your volts over here. I'm gonna turn the wheel, okay, to 12 volts, it's on there. All right, I'm gonna take the positive, and my battery's under here, and or the negative, and to the, negative side and the positive to the positive side of the battery. All right, and you can see it's at about 12.53. Um, and remember, I ran the lights and all that to get rid of the surface charge, so this is a more accurate reading. Now an optimal battery is 12.4 to about 12.6. If you're a little higher than that, that's fine. If you get in the low 12s, um, you've definitely got a, you know, a battery that's tired. Um, it may still crank, but here's the deal. This is actually this battery even though it's not cranking the bike well, you can see by this test that at 12.5, it's, it's pretty optimal. It's taking a charge, uh, no problem. The problem is we need to figure out uh, it, how, how are the cranking apps? Does it have enough cranking power still? And that's where a lot of batteries will fail. They'll take an overall charge, but when you try to crank the motor and put a load on it, uh, they fall short there, and uh, we'll find out if this one's tired. Let's look at the other meter real quick. Real quick guys, if you appreciate all these free videos and what we're trying to do to help the law-abiding biker community, there is a way you can support us. You can become a patron member, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. There'll be a link in the description below. You can pledge a certain amount per piece of content that we put out. No risk, because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits of becoming a member. There's a private Facebook group that's blowing up. There's also a uh, access to premium videos and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, all the information is over. Hit the link, check it out. All right, let's get back into your video. All right, so this is just a different type of multimeter. I at least wanted to show it to you in case yours looks similar to this. They all do the same thing. All right, I'm actually gonna turn it to off. Our positive side goes right over here. There's a V, okay, for volts. And then right over here, right next to it is the negative. Now, over here you can see V for volts. Um, I'm gonna turn it, there's two and 200 M20. I'm gonna turn it to the 20. That's 20 volts up to 20 volts. That's the closest to our motorcycle, which is the 12 volt system or a car if you were doing a car. So it's on 20, there we go. Now I'm gonna test it. Now on our other multimeter, we got a testing. Of course, I'm going to black to the negative side of the battery. And with the positive, I'm going to the positive side of the battery. And so we're at about a 12.72. That's a little bit higher than the other meter, which was a 12.5. Uh, zero or something close to that. So you will get a little bit of variance between multimeters, that's pretty common. But anyway, still showing that this battery has accepted and is holding a uh, pretty good charge. 
Okay, and I've got the other multimeter back on it here, and as you can see, they were both really close in range. And so what I'm looking for is we're gonna crank the bike in a second, because of course this battery's holding the charge, we've already tested that. I wanna see what it's doing under a load. And what we don't wanna see is this fall below 10 when I'm actually cranking the bike over. 9.6 at the lowest, if it's anywhere below those figures, then we've definitely got a tired battery that's on its way out. So I've got it all ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition on. And you can see it went down a little bit, of course, because the headlight and the radio is on. Again, our battery is looking pretty good um, right where it should be with, the, with some accessories on and things like that. Now we're going to go ahead and crank the bike and see what happens. All right, so you saw it there. And this battery is definitely getting tired. It's not terrible. It still fires the bike, but in cold weather with the oil thick, definitely could be some issues. It's on its way out. Okay, and the bike's off, and you saw it go up to 13, almost 14. It should go when the, bat when the bike's actually running. It should jump back up um, to about 14 to 14.5 14 volts. That means that your stator is working, that it's charging your battery, and you can see it instantly popped up once I started the bike. If you're below that, that could be an uh, uh, indication that your stator or your regular uh, regulator rectifier is going bad. So now that we've tested a battery that maybe is not optimal, we're going to move on over here to the Dyna Lowrider S. And we'll go ahead and test this battery and show you what a more optimal battery should look like. All right, we're on the Dyna Lowrider S, and this battery is definitely good. Cranks over good. Negative, positive. Let's see what kind of reading we get. And I've ran, I put the bike on for two minutes just like the other one to get rid of that false surface charge so we get an accurate reading. So basically, this battery being a really good battery is the same as my Street Glide Special with a bad battery. Again, just the overall charge of it. It's the cranking that's going to show the difference when we actually go to crank. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this bike up. We're turning it on there, headlight and all that. All right, so as you can see with the Dyna, it may, while it was cranking, quickly bump just a little bit below 10, but during the most of the cranking, it was above 10. And so that's what an optimal battery looks like. Now, my Street Glide wasn't extremely terrible, and it's still functional, and it starts the bike. However, I wasn't able to recreate a cold weather situation for you guys. And let me tell you, when the bike sits out in very cold weather, um, and I try to crank it. I did some testing. It, it sometimes doesn't want to even crank it all the way over. I put a meter on it during that cold weather and it actually was bumping all the way down to 7.5 to 8 right in there. And so that battery on that Street Glide definitely is on its way out. Yeah, I could get a little more out of it, but I do not want to get stranded leaving in a month, month and a half for a seven day trip to Canada. And that's not something I want to deal with. So I'm probably going to go ahead and switch out the Street Glide battery. And don't forget good battery maintenance so you don't have to prematurely buy a battery. Simple, inexpensive battery tenders. I'll link to it in the description below. It's affiliate link to the ones we use around here. Plug into a simple wall outlet, and then they come with these pigtails. You can see right here, negative and positive on the battery. I just sneak it up through the crack of the seat, and then it simply plugs in. Even if you're not gonna use your bike for a week, guys, even if it's summer, if you're gonna be on vacation and not ride it, why not just put it on a battery tender to make sure you don't have to buy another expensive battery, keep it in good condition. Let's move over to the Dyna here and I'll show you, I just have an alternate. You can really bring the pigtails out wherever you like. And this one, the Dyna, I just snuck it out, the pigtail right out the side of the battery box there, guys. So again, very simple way to make sure you don't have to prematurely buy a new battery. Well, I hope that video was useful to you. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you're notified when we come out with new free videos because we have a ton in the works for you guys. Give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with all your biker friends. I hope you're well. I definitely hope you're out there getting some riding in. Peace out.